All right, now that spring's here, uh, we're moving on to a more seasonally appropriate project, being uh, this boat of mine. It's a mid to late 70s uh, Thundercraft. It's about 15 feet long. It's a, it's a V-Hall runabout. It's nothing super special. Uh, but when I got it, I got it cheap, and it ran really well, so now we're going to make it kind of look the part and uh, tidy up some things now that it's proven that the engine's worth a damn. So, I'll show you some of the rougher spots. Um, mainly just some gouging over, you know, the past, I don't know, couple decades, half a century, give or take. Some real rough digs. So, step one is just sanding, doing a rough sand. We're going to get rid of all the gouges and uh, do an epoxy coat to seal it all up and then prep it for paint. Right, pup? He's excited to go for a ride too. All right, after a uh, general sanding of the whole hull, we're now on to repairing some of the big gouges in something this old. Um, what I did was I just took a flap wheel and uh, basically just dished out a bunch of the big digs in it so that the, uh, the filler has more of a surface to bond to. And uh, I left some of the other scratches just with a light scuff because uh, I'm not sure we'll need to use filler in those. Um, but there is some uh, blown through mountings from previous owners in this thing that still haunt this particular hull. So uh, we're just going to get everything uh, touched up and then continue the messy job. Now after a whole bunch of sanding, the bulk of the fairing uh, with regards to like the gouges and the old holes and everything else is mostly filled. You got one last uh, minor skim coat to do and then we're going to seal it up with some epoxy. Uh, especially because some of these areas were um, almost to the old fiberglass. The other piece is that we just got some shiny new hardware and uh, we need to be able to hog out the holes because while they are the same space uh, almost from center to center I increase the gauge of the shank because I want something a little sturdier than what it had. And they're going to be all three the same front and back. So that's our job now. So now the next step is we have to hog out the holes with an appropriate size for the shanks. And that would be our half inch because this is a half inch stainless steel shank. Uh, the whole boat is getting done in proper stainless steel hardware. That includes the stern and bow eyes, 
uh, the fill neck, everything else, because there's no sense in putting all this kind of work into a thing and then have the steel fittings rot out in it. Right, doggo? You don't care, you just want to stick your head out the side. It's also important that I do this before I've epoxy sealed. Mainly because if I screw this up, I can do the repair and not have to redo a bunch of things. spots, the bigger scratches, etc, etc. Uh, now we're going to wipe it down with some Varsol just to get rid of the waxes and oils and stuff like that that could have gotten on here uh, before you get ready to do the epoxy coat. Uh, the epoxy resin I'm putting on is a barrier coat to stop water ingress. Uh, I'm also doing an epoxy primer on this uh, along with the paint that'll seal it, but this will just be a uh, extra step uh, for the areas that I've sanded all the way through to the existing fiberglass. So, there you go. slightly tacky. The working temperature in here right now is about 12 degrees Celsius or for any American friends 50 or so degrees. So we're gonna knock off the second coat, seal it up, hopefully it doesn't look like garbage. Two coats barrier epoxy done and I think that's a good point to uh, call it for the first segment of this project. Uh, next steps for this is flipping it over and then getting to work on the inside. But that's another day. We're going to probably let this cure for a week uh, just to make sure it's good and solid before we uh, flip it over and start working on the top side and interior. But we'll show you that when that's getting going.